Hello everyone, welcome back. So in this video, we'll start with the problem from thermal physics. So I guess this is the check your understanding question 12 from Pathfinder. So the question is pretty straightforward. So we have a thin metal plate and one side of this plate is being illuminated by the sun. So there will be some heat flux that is coming through this side. Um, so let's just name that. So we can name it as QS dot. Okay, so this is the heat flux. And this exposed side to the sun has a temperature of T1 and the next side and the other side has a temperature of T2. So the question is what will be the temperatures of each sides become if we use the plate whose thickness is double this one. Okay, so that's the problem. Okay, so and also it was given that the surrounding temperature is T0. Okay, so we'll start with the assumption that T1 and T2 are not much greater in comparison to the atmospheric temperature okay so there will be some convection heat transfer from the surface of this plate to the surroundings and because the temperature difference between the plate and the surroundings are not that much okay and let's say this is equal to q1 dot and then we'll have the same convection heat transfer from the other surface as well which would be equal to q2 dot so this is the transfer of heat from the plate surface to the surroundings so now if we take the entire plate as one single system and do a heat balance so we have q s dot that is coming in right heating up the plate and we have q1 dot and q2 dot that are leaving the system so in steady state of course the amount of heat entering every second should be should equal the amount of heat leaving every second so we can say q s dot equals q1 dot plus q2 dot okay now q1 dot we can use the Newton's law of cooling formula and we can write it as some constant C let's say multiplied by T1 minus T0 and similarly for the other surface as well we can write it as T2 minus T0 okay so we can just combine them and write it as T1 plus T2 minus 2 T0 so now if we look at this surface number 2 we can just do a heat balance for the for this particular surface so okay so now let's just consider a thin element at the second surface so with respect to this element we have q2 dot escaping into the atmosphere and we also have the conduction heat transfer that is reaching this plate from the other side okay q dot conduction so this we can figure out using the formula ka delta t over d okay so the so this effectively is just another constant let's say c dash times t1 minus t2 so basically any element you choose at a distance of x if we zoom in and if we draw the zoomed picture of that element uh, we'll have the conduction heat transfer coming from the left and we'll also have q dot conduction leaving towards the right and this is because um, the heat entering has to be equal to the heat leaving otherwise the temperature at this particular location will change okay and in steady state we know that the temperature does not vary with time so that's why uh, any section you choose the heat transfer rate due to conduction at that specific location will be the same so yeah now we can just equate this to q2 dot so this is because we are balancing the heat uh, at this particular surface over here okay so this is the second equation so okay so now what we're going to do is double the thickness so in this situation i'm going to take the temperatures as t1 dash and t2 dash okay and and of course not much is going to change the heat flux coming from the sun is going to be still the same um, everything c and t naught is also going to be the same the only thing that is varying is these two terms okay so we can write t1 prime plus t2 prime equals t1 plus t2 using the first equation okay in this equation the new value for q2 dot is going to be the constant c multiplied by t2 prime minus t naught so this is a new value of q2 dot and for the conduction term uh, the only difference is that the, den the denominator will become twice because the thickness is now doubled so this will be c dash by 2 times t1 prime minus t2 prime okay so initially this was also equal to q2 dot which was c times t2 minus t naught so from here we can figure out the value of c prime divided by c so now after substituting the value of c prime divided by c we get this relation okay, so now we have two equations in the variables t1 prime and t2 prime so now all we have to do is just solve them okay so and after substituting and and a bit of calculations you get these two answers for t1 prime and t2 prime so yeah that's basically it for this question now let's move on to the next one okay so in this problem we have an air conditioner that is used to maintain a constant temperature of 21 degrees celsius in a room and the outside air temperature is 42 degrees celsius so how much should the power consumed by the air conditioner from the network be increased so that after turning on an electric lamp with a power of 150 watts in the room the temperature does not change 
So we have to consider that the air conditioner is an ideal heat engine that is operating on a reversed Carnot cycle. Okay. Okay. So let's begin. Okay, so the reverse Carnot engine is basically a refrigeration cycle. And when we talk about the refrigeration cycle, it looks something like this. So we externally provide some work to the system. So which is in the form of electrical input for an air, in the case of an air conditioner. Okay, so we then what we expect the refrigerator to do is extract out as much heat as possible from the low temperature reservoir. So in the case of a refrigerator, it's the inside compartment of the refrigerator. So that's the low temperature reservoir. So what we essentially want is to suck out as much heat as possible from the low temperature reservoir. So in this case, the room is the room low temperature reservoir in the case of an air conditioner. So we can define a certain efficiency in this case, which is known as the coefficient of performance. So just as we define any other efficiencies, this is basically what we want divided by what we pay for. So what we want is to maximize the value of QL, which is the heat sucked out from the low temperature reservoir. So we want to maximize that as much as possible divided by what we pay for is the work input that we need to supply. So this is how we define the coefficient of performance of this refrigeration cycle. So now, now if we apply first law of thermodynamics on the entire cycle, we can say W plus QL equals QH or we can also write W as mod QH minus mod QL. Okay, so now the thing is we can convert this expression in terms of the temperatures of reservoirs as well. So we can also write this as TL divided by TH minus TL. Now how we do this is by using the idea that as we are talking about reversible heat engines, the net entropy transfer in a cycle, it must be zero. So then we get the relation that QH upon TH equals QL upon TL. Okay, so you can basically read it in any standard textbook. Okay, so now here the low temperature reservoir is our room that we need to keep cool. So that was at 21 degrees Celsius to 94 Kelvin and the surrounding temperature was 42 degrees Celsius. Uh, TL is 21. So 42 minus 21 will be 21. Okay. And this turns out to be 14. So the coefficient of performance turning out to be 14 just means that if we supply one joule of energy to the refrigerator, it can extract out 14 joules of energy from the low temperature reservoir. Okay. So beta multiplied by W is the heat that we can extract out of the low temperature reservoir. So, so let's just draw a rough picture. So let's say this is the isolated room. So we have the AC uh, attached to this room. So the AC can remove a heat corresponding to QL from the room. And this is nothing but beta multiplied by the amount of work that we need to supply to the AC. So now as we are talking in terms of power, so we'll just talk about the rate of work that that we need to supply or the power that we need to supply to the AC. Okay, so now the thing is, um, if the AC is removing an amount of heat QL dot every second from the room. So now let's say this is the lamp that is placed at the middle of the room. So now we are supplying a power of 150 watts to this lamp. Now as this is an isolated system, okay, so now because of the heating effect of the resistance, the lamp will radiate heat at a rate of 150 watts. So we'll have to remove the heat at a rate of 150 watts if we want to maintain the room temperature constant. Okay, so that's the main idea. So, okay, so the power supplied to the air conditioner would be just 150 divided by beta which is 14. Okay, so this would be approximately 10.71 watts. Okay, so that's the answer to this problem. So yeah, that was it for this video, guys. If you have any doubts, you can ask below. And that's it. Thanks for watching.